yeah it's my birthday okay my birthday weekend that's why we have the birthday hair in oh wait uh oh hey what's up it's cecily and it's this week in rideshare news our first story comes from an uber employee that writes an open letter to uber about the driver strike the employee remained anonymous but writes this open letter in response to the strike and the treatment of drivers um, i'm going to include a link for you so that you can look at the letter in its entirety but i wanted to read a part that struck me our drivers are the backbone of the platform without them as these courageous strikes have demonstrated our business would come to a standstill for this reason we will not stand by as those that work at the heart of our business are attacked and exploited we demand that all of our drivers are fairly remunerated that they gain greater transparency about how their earnings are calculated that they are guaranteed greater protections and that their collective voice is heard in the boardroom this person speaks from a place of not only does she or he feel this way but that there are many employees in this rideshare tech space that feel that the drivers are exploited and they want they want something to be done about it they want this issue to be addressed and i think it's important for people to wrap their head around that that not everyone that works for these companies is in agreement with some of the business practices i've spoke to people that work for lyft i've spoke to people that work for uber and it's almost kind of surprising when they're like yeah we know what your issues are and we're trying to help we really want to help and many people want to help i think that right now is a good time while both companies are going public for issues to be addressed i think this letter was definitely on time not only because there's so much more talk about fair earnings and things of that nature but you know the ipo these companies going public and being that they depend on millions of drivers to keep their business going this is the part that you can't ignore you can't ignore the drivers and their needs that just it can happen so i'm going to leave a link in the description so you guys can read that please read that and share it share it let's get a dialogue going i'm sure by now you've heard about the uh usc student that unfortunately lost her life the other day because she got into the car of a fake uber driver a campaign was launched called what's my name and that campaign was designed to remind college students to ask the name of their rideshare drivers before they get into their car. I would like to take this opportunity to urge you to use the What's My Name campaign, but as a driver. Uh, personally, I have to know your name before you enter my car. I will not unlock the locks before I know your name. And I have often received a pushback from people because they're like, wait, I need to find out who you are. I need to know who you are before you get in my car. If they do not provide the right answer, then do not pick them up. Don't let being polite be the reason that you're no longer with us. A lot of times as women, uh, we, are, <laughs> we are socialized to be polite and to be pleasant. And some people are no longer with us because they were being too polite to the wrong person. I think it's a good reminder, uh, especially for my drivers out there. Some of y'all that, some of my guy drivers that are really masculine and, and aren't afraid of anything. I'm talking to you guys and I'm also talking to my youngsters too, my 20 somethings who are fearless and feel invincible. This thing could go south very quickly in a blink of an eye. Remember, confirm the person that ordered the Uber. The Daily Mail talks about a poll that was released this past week uh, saying that Americans still do not trust autonomous technology and many would not pay extra to have that in their car. In fact, they said 63% would not pay more money to have the autonomous technology put into their vehicle. And 40% of those people said they wouldn't pay more than $2,000. <laughs> Here's my theory as to why I think Americans are not ready for autonomous vehicles. When's the last time you've seen an autonomous vehicle? You haven't seen them. We haven't really seen them on the streets, number one. The only thing most of us can associate this with is like the future. 
These movies about the future where everything is all dark and creepy and weird. There's no sun anymore. I don't know what happened to the sun. And you're driving on these like dark streets or, or you're in these flying cars that are manned by robots. This is a scary world. This is a world that we can't relate to. This is a world that we all want to be a part of. So you ask us, do we want to sign up for it? Heck no. I'm a Los Angeles driver. You mean to tell me now I got to worry about robots? I'm not even sure why this is news. Uber sees success with the Uber bus program in various cities across the country and seeks to expand in other places soon. The company first launched the Uber bus program in a city in Mexico as a low cost transportation option and has quickly expanded to other areas around the world. Uber bus program is basically a shared taxi. A lot of countries have these kinds of buses. They go by different names. In this case, this would be kind of like a private but public bus for commuters and it would fall below uh, the pool, the Uber pool or Uber Express option that most of y'all <laughs> love so much. <laughs> In fact, they are actually expanding positions for the engineers and folks to work on this program. And you may likely see something like this in your city. The difference with this program is that there is an actual Uber bus. Um, my thoughts are like, maybe they're thinking that folks will go buy like little buses and stuff and put them on the platform. But as you can see here, this is a vehicle that is provided by Uber for its drivers. Would I ever take a Uber bus? I've definitely taken Pool Express uh, as a rider. I ride quite often, guys. I think I think I could do the bus thing if it was a straight shot. At the same time, I like convenience, I like comfort, and I don't really like to be around strangers if I don't have to, so I probably wouldn't use the option unless it was somehow more convenient. The only way it would probably make sense for me is if it I save some kind of commuter time. Other than that, it's really not something that I would do. But I'm curious, would you guys be interested in driving an Uber bus, riding an Uber bus? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. If you were required to provide your fingerprint, would you drive for rideshare? A new bill is being considered requiring all rideshare drivers to be fingerprinted before being added to the platform. I saw this on a Facebook post of a driver group that I'm a part of. Most of the people that responded were like, sure, like why not? Like, I don't have anything to hide. There were several people that felt like it might be an invasion of privacy and a way to collect information, biometric information on you and they were completely against it. But I would say more than half of the people that were responding on Facebook were like, okay with it. Um, I've got another reason why you should be okay with it. If we're gonna add another variable, <laughs> y'all are not gonna like this. If we add another hurdle to become a driver, if fingerprints are a part of it, then that means that the quality of drivers should go up just a tad, just a tad, right? And it limits the amount of people on the road. And I have loved ones that jump into Ubers and Lyfts and other rideshare companies every day. And I don't want them riding around with criminals. I'm not just thinking about my bottom line, but I'm thinking about I don't want my people that I love to be around folks that might just go rogue. And people go rogue all the time, okay? But, you know, not having that much competition on the road would be nice. And two, you know, just making sure that the right people are doing the job, um, I think is worth it. And I think it's something that should happen. It's necessary. And at some point in your life, you will have to share your fingerprint, even if that means uh, you're going to 24 hour fitness, you're gonna have to share that fingerprint at some point. The last story of this week is one of my favorites. It's the feel good part of the show. There's a guy who was picked up by an Uber driver. His name is Andre. Andre passes him a notepad and a pen. and says that we may never see each other again, but if you could, please offer me words of advice. The guy thumbs through the notepad and sees that there's tons of entries from people. He offers his word of advice and then asks the guy, hey, so what does this actually mean? What are you doing with this? The guy said that when he 
first approach rideshare, he looked at every passenger as something to do. Uh, another hurdle to get the money, another thing, another thing. You know what I mean? And I can relate to that, right? I'm sure you guys can too. And then he said, well, I could look at it in a positive way and saying these encounters, these trips are opportunities for me to meet someone that can share something with me to enrich my life. Now, I may be putting <laughs> words in his mouth, but that's generally what he meant. The guy said that Andre is going to compile all this stuff and re release it in a book, which I thought was awesome. And I've actually spoke to drivers who have done similar things and been wildly successful. And I think it's pretty cool if you are that kind of person to give your riders things to do. I have fond memories of you know, meeting certain people, having certain conversations, certain things happening on the road. Like these are all experiences that stay with us. It's easy to be like, oh, I don't get paid enough and I, there's too much work and I can't take it and da, 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 da. Or you can have a positive outlook. And if you're a person that believes that positive attracts positive, then I think approaching rideshare that way and what you're doing all day can open your mind up and uh, life up to other opportunities. So that was the preachy moment. <laughs> Hey, so if you're not sure where you are and how you got here, you're at the Rideshare Guy channel. And every week I share what's happening in Rideshare news. And so if you are not subscribed to Harry's channel, he's got a lot of great information here. Please hit that subscription button below. So I would like to give a shout out to Darren Lim. He's the guy that shared the, the Uber employee open letter story with us good looking out that was a really good story i appreciate that so if you've got any tips any news or anything like that you can leave those things in the comments you can contact me directly on drive girl drive on facebook or youtube you can also come to my channel and check me out and see what i talk about because i talk about a lot of stuff over there and i'm thinking it's about it i'm about to go and celebrate my birthday have a great weekend guys and see you next week bye